friends, we're back. And the rose garden bloomed while we were away. We were gone for one week and just things took off. I think the weather was perfect. You can see all the gorgeous roses behind me and I'm gonna take you in closer. Check out how much our roses grew in just one week. When I left, there were just a few blooms and now everything is completely bloomed. And some of them have been bloomed so long that they've now expired. So I have a lot of cutting to do, but I just wanted to take a moment and show you these amazing roses. The one I'm standing behind right now, this is Boscobel. Boscobel is gigantic. Look at that. So this is Boscobel. This is Benjamin Britton. Benjamin Britton's really large and it's got a lot of blooms this season. This is only the second year or the second season for all of these roses. You might remember we planted this garden last spring and they're all, there's seven David Austin roses here. So I'm gonna show you one of my favorites next. This one right here is Desdemona. And Desdemona is incredibly fragrant gorgeous. It has a slight blushy color to it, which I'm just in love with. It is one of my absolute favorite roses. It's such a good grower here in Southern California. It's pretty, it's fragrant. Um, and then there's also Carding Mill in the back. That's this orangey one. And that's Carding Mill, another one that I heard was good for Southern California. And while it's definitely beautiful, it's not, I wouldn't say one of my absolute favorites. Um, and then here, this is the Almwick, a very pretty light pink rose. You can see a lot of them have expired, but if you look here at the top, look how many buds are on these branches. So we have a lot of Almwick coming in. Um, I definitely, if you like the color of the carding mill, by the way, I wouldn't say don't get it. I just haven't noticed too much vigor from it compared to my other roses and not a strong fragrance, which I'm really drawn toward, towards fragrant roses. One that's fragrant, speaking of fragrant, is the Golden Celebration. So Golden Celebration, oh, I'm just gonna try to bring some of these up. Obviously this one's looking a little uh, lanky. Oh my gosh. So Golden Celebration has an incredible fragrance. It's kind of like a vintage yellow and they're very big blooms as you can see. So Golden Celebration is one that I really like because it's fragrant and it's yellow. I love yellow roses. Um, and then in the back there, like I said, that's Benjamin Britten, which is one that isn't written much about in California. I'm gonna go over this way. So this is Benjamin Britten and this one is not talked about very much, especially here in Southern California, but I decided I had to try it anyway and I'm really glad I did. As you can see, it's a taller bushing rose, so it's more upright and um, quite tall. Um, and this is only its second season again. But also, the color on these cupped blooms is just hard to capture. It's almost like a hot, vibrant watermelon color. Um, and as the bloom fades, it kind of like pales out a little bit. It's hard to describe. Um, Benjamin Britton has a lot of thorns. It's a very thorny rose, but oh, it's a stunning one. So very happy with Benjamin Britten. And then, oh, I didn't mention the Princess Alexandra of Kent, which is actually over here. And I have let the Artemisia overtake it on accident. So it's not looking super happy, but we'll go take a look. Okay, so this is Artemisia and it's overgrown my Princess Alexandra. So it's not looking super happy, but this is, oh my gosh, there's even, there's even a part, part of it over here too. So this is all Princess Alexandra. But you can see down here, it's a really, it's a pink bloom. It's extremely fragrant. I specifically remember the fragrance from last year. And sorry, the irrigation's turning on. Um, <laughs> so yes, this is Princess Alexandra of Kent, which is one that is very fragrant. And if you give it space, it grows well here. So note that. So I just talked to you and shared all about our second year roses. So those are the ones we planted just last year from bare root. Now, this is a different rose that I've actually had since I started gardening. And this is the Lady Gardener. It's also a David Austin rose. And I actually selected this back when I didn't really know much about roses at all. So this was just available at the nursery. I'm like, oh, it's gorgeous. I'm going to get it. 
turns out it is a gorgeous rose. It is dependable. It's obviously survived all these years. It doesn't really have a fragrance, but you can see it's kind of got like this peachy middle. I'm trying to find a good, ooh, right here. Look, you can see the peachy middle. Isn't that insanely beautiful? So it's definitely a beautiful rose and it's done well here. Look at that. All right, so now I'm gonna take you over to where the irrigation just started running, but another set of roses. All right. <laughs> so I am standing under an arch here that has a Graham Thomas rose. And there's a funny story about the Graham Thomas. I actually didn't order it. I had ordered a Shropshire Lab and I got this one on accident. So we've remedied the mistake um, but in the meantime, I now have a Graham Thomas rose. So it turned out now it's one of my favorite roses. It's fragrant. It grows vigorously here. The blooms, I don't know if you can see, but... The blooms on this rose are like a deep golden butter yellow. And they come off in these gorgeous bunches. It's very romantic looking. The fragrance is like a tea fragrance. So it's a little different than some of the other roses that you might be used to, but I find it really pleasant. I do find that it actually drops its petals pretty quick, but it produces so much that when you have the, the big bouquet of them, it just looks really dramatic. Um, and then down here is actually one of the newer roses. It's brand new. This is its first season for me. Um, down here. This is Munstead Wood and it's supposed to have an amazing old rose fragrance and I can kind of smell it in this first bloom. But one thing to keep in mind with roses like this is the first blooms can always be a little awkward. So they don't always look how you might see them in catalogs um, and you're not always going to get all those characteristics in the first bloom. It's still kind of at that point struggling to establish and it's not as strong over here this is hard to see this is darcy bustle and i need to clear back the sweet peas but darcy bustle blooms i've had this rose for as long as i've had the lady gardener and it is a great rose it is vigorous it does not stay in a shrub form um so i've just decided to keep it here with the graham thomas and just let it grow like crazy so once the sweet peas are gone, the Darcy bustle will just take up this whole area, but it already put off, put off its first blush. I love Darcy bustle, it's beautiful. It's a little more magenta than the Munstead wood. Um, so yeah. Before I let you go, there are two more roses I wanna share with you today. And the first is the Eden Climber. I've had this Eden Climber for quite a while now. It's been moved a couple times in my yard and it is just so impressively resilient. If you're a beginner looking for a good climbing rose that grows in height quite fast, an Eden Climber could be for you. There is no fragrance, so that is one downside, but I just can't get over the luscious green leaves, the blushy centers, and really just the impact that this rose brings to the garden. The second rose that I want to share with you today is my beloved Lady of Shalott. Many of you know that this is the rose I have growing around my front door. It means so much to me. It is one of the first roses that we planted when we first bought our home. So that's something that just is very special because I've always wanted a rose climbing around our front door. And the Lady of Shalott is an exceptional grower here in Zone 10. I have to say it loves our Southern California climate. And this year it put off quite a show as you can see. So the Lady of Shalott here is I think going on seven years old and it is a rose that I would recommend over and over if of course you like the orange color. Obviously I think that we have to grow roses that we love but I do think that there's a rose out there for everybody. So we just picked all of these and I am without words. It's just oh oh this is Darcy Bustle, Benjamin Britten, Lady Gardner. Wow rose season. All right, friends, I hope you enjoyed this spring 2023 rose tour. Stay tuned because next week I'm going to show you how I deadhead and feed these roses after their first flush. Thanks so much for watching.